Hey everyone, and welcome back to the channel, a place where writers, language lovers, and generally word-obsessed people can hang out. Today I'm back with another resources video, this time for another one of the languages I'm learning, and that is Brazilian Portuguese. I hope that some of these resources can help you out as you are learning Portuguese, or if you would like to learn Portuguese, maybe this will get you excited and you can find some things to help you out as you start your language learning journey. So the first one I have today that I'm going to cover is this book called The Everything Learning Brazilian Portuguese Book. And this is the very first book that I started with, and it is really great for just going over the basics of the language, going over the different grammatical aspects, you know, nouns, verbs, how to conjugate, how to create simple sentences, all that basic foundational stuff is in this book. And it's all in one book. It's very easy to use. It comes with a CD so that you can actually hear how the words are pronounced. I really recommend this as a resource just to get you started. It doesn't take very long to read through. And if you do all the included little workbook exercises, then you're going to be able to practice the things that are brought forth in each lesson. So this one's kind of a fun way to get started with the language. And I went through this once completely and actually went back through and looked at different sections. And even now, sometimes I'll pull it out and use it just to look up a certain conjugation if I'm not completely sure how to how to make that conjugation, it's really good to refer back to and just keep on your shelf as a resource. Another one is the Modern Brazilian Portuguese Grammar Book. You can buy a workbook to go along with this where you can actually do a bunch of grammar exercises. This has probably everything you would ever want to learn as far as grammar for Brazilian Portuguese. I mean, it is a very thick book. I would recommend just having this on your shelf. You can read through portions of it. It's not hard to read. It's easy to look things up in. And if you do the accompanying workbook for some of the exercises, then you get some practice with the grammar elements that maybe you want to learn or that you're struggling with. Now, the version that I have, I think they have released a new one. I believe it's blue now instead of green. So when you see it, if you look it up online, you may actually see a blue copy as the newest version, but this is the one that I bought a couple of years ago and have been using. Before I get into this next resource, I'm a firm believer in learning vocabulary in context. I don't really encourage learning long, long lists of vocabulary, just list after list after list, because it's hard to maintain that in your memory and it's hard to pull those words back when you need to use them because you're not actually learning how they're used in the sentence. You're not seeing them in context. So I feel like learning vocabulary in context is the best way. That being said, learning some basic vocabulary words that you're going to use day to day, there are some vocabulary lists that probably are just going to help you with that basic foundation. Try to learn them in context as much as possible, but for a resource, I did buy this Frequency Dictionary of Portuguese, and this has the top 5,000 most used Portuguese words. And it's really helpful because it has all the words broken out, one through 5,000. You can look them up. It has information about them. It has example sentences and what the sentence means. So it's really helpful in that respect. And also it does give you some sections where it will list words together like this one on the weather. If you are going to learn lists of vocabulary words, I would encourage you to at least learn them like this where a lot of words are related to each other. So it will give them some context in that respect. So this is just kind of a fun resource because it's just got the most commonly used vocabulary words. If you did know pretty much all these words in this book, you're going to have a pretty decent command of the language because these are the words that are most frequently spoken in the language. And of course, that brings me to the pure book section of these resources. And first, I wanna look a little bit at, at readers. So if you are starting out, um, Ollie Richards ha has made series of books for a lot of different languages. I bought this one to try out, his Brazilian Portuguese one, and it's actually really good. The stories are very, like interesting, they're not boring, they're fun to read, and there's a lot of vocabulary in here. He has different lists of the words at the end that are bolded words within the different chapters of the story that you can look up 
to see what it means. He has questions after each chapter so you can see if you were able to fully comprehend the chapter. So this is nice because you can go through, read these stories that don't take very long. Each one has just a few chapters. So you can read a chapter a day or you can read the whole story in an evening. If you go back and read it multiple times, it's really helpful because it just helps cement all that vocabulary in your head. And this is a really good way to actually get the vocabulary in context. And this one by Lingo Mastery, um, Portuguese short stories for beginners. They have a lot of different books for different languages. So this is another way that you can get something similar where you're reading a story. They provide some vocabulary. I believe these have, yes, they have questions at the end as well. So this is another good resource if you're going through and wanting something to kind of target your level so that you know, okay, I'm just starting. I want something at the beginner level. Then you can get these and know that you're not going to be overwhelmed with sentence structures and vocabulary that are just way, way, way far above your head. And then you can move on to the intermediate ones and advanced ones if they're available. And once you feel good with your reading level, then certainly move on to full novels like this one where you can actually go through and read the novel, enjoy the story, and be learning tons and tons of vocabulary and grammar structures along the way. Like I say with everything, try to find books and novels, nonfiction, fiction, it doesn't matter in your target language because that is going to make a huge difference for your comprehension and you will be more easily able to produce the language on your own because you're absorbing all that information and context and it just makes it much easier for your brain to make those connections and then to re reproduce that in your own speech and in your own writing. And of course, just like with Japanese, I have a notebook that I use for Brazilian Portuguese. I'm sure some people use one notebook for all the languages that they're studying, but I really like to have them separated out so that I know when I'm looking in that notebook that all the information in there is stuff that I have recorded over the months and years regarding that language. Now, for if you're just having a, something for journaling, something like that, I will definitely mix languages in something that I'm just journaling. So if I want to write something at the end of the day and I want to switch between my different languages, that's a lot of fun. And sometimes I'll mix my languages in my notebooks when I'm learning one language through another. So say my level in Japanese is higher than my level in Portuguese. So I'm going to write down the Japanese of what this is to explain how to use the Portuguese. So in that way, sometimes I'll mix as well because I don't want everything coming through my native English filter. I want to be able to mix and match and have my brain be able to move between the languages a little more easily. So sometimes I'll mix my languages, but I do like to have separate small notebooks for my studies for that particular language because it'll allow me to get really focused in that language and know that when I pull that notebook out, I have a lot of information in there regarding that language. So these are just a few resources that I have found that have been helpful for me and my study of Brazilian Portuguese. I hope maybe these can be helpful for you if you're just starting the language or no matter what your level, some of these are going to be really good resources that you can use, whether you're intermediate or advanced level. But regardless, I hope that you had some ideas from things that I presented here and you're able to utilize some of these for your language studies. If you enjoyed what you've seen here, it would be absolutely amazing if you could nudge that little like button so that this video can spread and help other language lovers out there. And as always, remember to keep following your dreams and to believe in the magic of this thing called life. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you again soon.